Thank you, Julie. And thank you and your team for putting this awesome event together today. And um, we are so pleased to be able to be a big part of it. And uh, I'm also very pleased to have wonderful speakers who have agreed to join us for this. So you're gonna be in for a treat. Our philosophy at Gravitate is data analytics for everyone. And uh, I really wanna make sure that everyone is able to understand the concepts that um, all the speakers will be talking about. So I thought what we would do is we would begin with a couple of items that uh, will help bring everybody up to a great starting place. So the first item is data governance. Uh, with any type of, of data analytics um, initiative, we recommend that you do some amount of data governance. And the concept behind that is really getting a handle on what data you have, um, prioritizing it, getting executive support to, to do this initiative. And at the very lowest level, you might end up being focused on terms and definitions. And that can be very important. So everybody is working from the same sheet of music. You're also gonna be here, our speakers talking about a data lake and data blending. Very, two very important concepts when it comes to analytics. First, the data lake. Um, it really is a modern data warehouse. Um, it's where all of your data from all of your system goes. And, um, and usually it's built with big data technology so it can handle a lot of data. And you probably have a lot of systems at your office. The idea is that you wanna take all that data and blend it together into the data lake so it becomes very useful. We did a little bit of study and found that, that most organizations, only 20% of the data they have is actually in their AMS or their CRM system. So as you can imagine, if you're only doing analytics on data in your, in your membership system, you're really missing out on a lot because you really want to be looking at the activity in social media, your email, on your website, all that type of thing. So data blending, bringing all that data together is very, very important. The next major concept is data transformation. That's when the data makes it into the data lake and then you want to improve it before you start using it for analysis. Um, one might be just correcting bad data that's in your um, existing systems. A second might be simplifying the complexity of the data. An example of that might be, you might have a data element such as join date, well, wouldn't it be nice to convert that into tenure for your members and then you can analyze the data based on tenure? Just makes the data easy, uh, simplifying it. And ultimately, you want to put the, the system and then the data in the hands of all your, all your users and make that really available to everyone. And then ultimately, the part that we're all most familiar with is really the visualizations and dashboards that come with any great data analytics tool. And in this case, we're looking at a classic executive dashboard where there's been a bunch of different visualizations that have been brought together. And so maybe an executive team can look at that and make real quick decisions about important matters of the business. So when you're done building a data analytics initiative, you're gonna end up with this kind of concept where you're pulling data from all your various important systems, you're blending it together, because really the key to understanding your members is having insight from your data analytics. I hope you enjoy all the other segments and that you get a lot out of all of these, all this information that our speakers will be providing you today. Thank you. Hi there, thanks for joining us today. We are going to be talking about supporting and engaging components with data analytics in this segment. My name is Rebecca Duff. I am the Director of Client Success at Gravitate Solutions. And with me today is Drew Thomason from the Illinois Principals Association. Hi, Drew. Hi, Rebecca, great to be here. Thanks for being here. Uh, you wanna go ahead and get started and uh, tell us about yourself and about IPA. Sure. So uh, as Rebecca said, my name is Drew Thomason. I am the Communications and Marketing Director for the Illinois Principals Association. Uh, a little bit about my role there. So I handle all of our email marketing, our online community management, um, some member retention stuff. And uh, I guess either I stumbled into it or no one else wanted to do it, but kind of leading our data analytics side too. Um, and a little bit about the association. We are an association of roughly 5,800 uh, education leaders in the state of Illinois. Our members include principals, assistant principals, deans, vice principals, superintendents, 
Uh, everyone along those lines, uh, we are a membership driven organization. And uh, one of the things that our, our membership asks for is a lot of professional learning events. So we also offer more than 140 uh, professional learning events. Uh, this year we're all digital, but usually it is a mix of face-to-face uh, -face and online events. All right, fantastic. So what I want to talk about today, Drew, is your data analytics solution, which is Nucleus, and then how you use that to uh, work with your components, uh, your regions. So why don't you start and tell us you know, why you needed a data analytics solution and how you got to be where you are today? Sure. So as uh, I'm sure a lot of you out there are doing, we originally started with an Excel spreadsheet, and then it turned into two Excel spreadsheets, and then three. Um, and that was how we were tracking kind of the health of the association. I mean, there, there is a lot of um, things that people would just say, though, the, the association's healthy, or membership is healthy, or our professional learning events are doing well. Um, and a lot of that was probably true, but it was more gut feeling than actual numbers. Or if it was numbers, it was probably our executive director, who's the only person going back and reviewing those numbers ever. Um, and he was also uh, kindly berating us to go in and fill in the numbers that we are responsible for in that, in that Excel spreadsheet. Um, long story short, we decided to move databases. We went from NetForm, two instances of NetForm Pro to one instance of NetForm Enterprise. And when we were making that migration, um, we decided as part of that, it was time to integrate some kind of data analytics solution, kind of move away from the, the spreadsheet and, and get into the, uh, the 21st century. And after going to some conferences, talking to some people, uh, we decided Nucleus was, was a good fit for us, given all the components that, that we used. Uh, we started that journey in 2017, I believe, and uh, haven't looked back. And, and uh, I'm sure Rebecca gets annoyed a little bit with all the uh, changes that I request or ideas I, I might have. And so that's kind of where we're at. We've, we've moved from an Excel spreadsheet uh, kind of housing uh, all of our key indicators to a, an uh, up-to-date uh, website where any of our staff can log in at any time and kind of check on the, the health of either their department or the association generally. That's fantastic. And we're actually going to look at that in a little bit, Drew, and show what some of those key indicators are to everyone. Uh, so what systems, you mentioned NetForum, right? What other systems are you bringing into Nucleus and into the data lake? Sure. Like I said, Net, NetForm Pro or NetForm Enterprise would probably be the, the big one. Um, but uh, as I said uh, in my introduction, I'm our online community uh, manager. Uh, for our online community, we use Higher Logic, So we're bringing in information about uh, user activity, discussions, library usage, all that kind of uh, thing. We also have Informs, which I guess is under the Higher Logic uh, umbrella now, but uh, we use Informs for, for our email and marketing. Uh, we're bringing that data in. Uh, we're, we're bringing in our Google Analytics uh, web data, bringing in that so we know how our, our website is doing. Um, trying to think if there's any more. I know we, we have SurveyMonkey currently. Mm -hmm. uh, we do evaluations on our professional learning through SurveyMonkey. So we're kind of bringing in that raw data and uh, running some analysis on that to, to get an idea of how our, uh, our consumers are taking to that, those professional learning events. All right, fantastic. So let's focus in now on your components, your regions. Uh, how do you all interact with them? And then how have you used Nucleus to interact with them, you know, better improve your communication with them? Sure. So uh, again, we're the Illinois Principals Association. So we just deal with Illinois and within Illinois, um, it's actually a pretty big state, eight hours to drive from the southern tip to the, the northern tip. Um, we have 21 regions, geographic regions. And uh, they, again, range from Cairo, it's not, it's Cairo, not Cairo, Illinois, um, and a couple of the surrounding counties down there, um, all the way up to Cook Counties, which encompass Chicago, Cook, Cook County, that it encompasses Chicago. So our, our kind of um, grassroots leadership is broken up into 21 geographic regions. And 
Um, we, we interact with our regions mainly through our online community and through email. And so our executive director will communicate out um, anything that they, they might need to know that is either happening in the world of education within the state of Illinois or federally um, that they need to know. And also what's happening within the association that, that either we would like for them to push out to, to members in the region or things that they just need to know. Um, and so a, a few years back, uh, our annual conference, uh, we were starting to see the numbers kind of flag um, they'd been flat or down for several years in a row um, th through a combination of circumstances. And we decided that um, instead of just relying on a statewide approach, we were going to lean on kind of a grassroots approach to drive up numbers. So we looked at the past few years of data on uh, who is coming from where, and we reached out to our region members, our region leaders, and we said, all right, here's what past few years of attendance has looked like for the members coming from your area. Here's our goal for this year. We set a pretty ambitious goal, um, but not something we thought was undoable. And uh, we, we continued to update them on how they were doing with that goal. And, and actually we smashed past our, our original goal. This was two years ago. And um, we, the, we're on our third year of doing this. And each year we've seen our annual conference attendance grow because we, we think a large factor is due to us setting the goals for the regions and being able to communicate out how they were doing. So this is kind of where our data analytics side came in. Uh, previously, we could find those numbers. Uh, it would be a little bit of work for our staff. And uh, because our executive director is the one who really does the, the majority of communicating with them. If someone came to him and said, hey, Jason, I would like to know how our region is doing, uh, before data analytics tool that we implemented, he would have had to go to our conference director and say, hey, Pam, I need numbers for DuPage region to know how they're doing. She'd have to, to do some work in the database, pull out those numbers, go back to Jason, and then he could finally tell the region leadership, hey, here's your numbers. Whereas now, if he's on the phone with them during a meeting or if they uh, send off a quick email or text, literally within 30 seconds, he pulls up Nucleus, sees where, where they are in terms of their goals that we've set and has that information right back to them. So instead of waiting days or maybe a week to get that information, again, it's now within minutes. And, and so uh, they know where they're, they're at within that goal um, and then they can kind of communicate that out to the members within their region. And also uh, we communicate that out to all of our region leadership every week. And so there's also a little bit of a competitive spirit that, that happens. It's like, well, I'm at 60%. Why are you only at 40%? Come on, I, I bet I'll get to 110% uh, by the time conference um, is starting. Uh, so so and, and that, that's been a, a big success uh, for us. And, and we've been really happy with, with that program. All right, fantastic. I have to say that is one of my favorite uh, kind of hidden outcomes of implementing Nucleus is the like gamification and the just like the natural competition that comes out as you start to reveal, you know, chapter goals or chapter progress or, you know, any sort of metric you find that without even doing much, right, you're just like naturally this competition starts to form and it benefits everyone. Well, I'll, um, I'll tell you, uh, yeah. leading up probably within the two months before our conference, uh, this when I was working in the office when we were all in the before times. Um, the, literally, my executive director, myself, and our conference uh, director would have Nucleus up either on one screen all the time, or we would pull it up hourly and be like, hey, did you see that we just hit 600? Hey, did you see that we hit 650? So not only does it, does it provide gamification for kind of our members and our, our volunteer leaders, but there was just like this sense of uh, I don't know about competition, but like pride that was happening in the office that, that really got staff excited about, about conference and, and getting this up and going and seeing our numbers climb. Yeah, I love that. And so that's a great segue, Drew. Let's actually look at, um, I believe it's the key indicators that you all kept up on your TV screens. And so let's start there. All right, so Drew, up on the screen, I have your key indicators. Uh, Carousel, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what you all looked at when you put this together and then when you had it up on the TVs. Sure. So uh, after being with Nucleus for a couple of months uh, and, and learning from it and, and kind of growing with it and it growing with us, we, we said, 
This is great. We have a bunch of our data points coming in and we can kind of cross-reference them. But what are the key indicators here that would be a, a reflection of association health? Um, what can we look at at a glance and know, yes, we're doing good. No, we're doing bad. We need to find out why this number is where it's at. So as I said earlier, we're a membership-driven organization. Uh, membership revenue is a large part of our revenue. So obviously, knowing our total number of members is very important. Uh, we even have a set goal within our uh, three-year strategic plan, so we can kind of just gauge how we're doing there. Uh, we, as I said earlier also, we deliver 140 professional learning events on an annual basis. Um, and again, a huge uh, revenue generator for us. So this professional um, events uh, card lets us know how we're doing year over year, um, both in terms of number of people that we're reaching and how our revenue is doing compared to that. Uh, we offer a membership or a, uh, a subscription service for school handbooks that uh, have to meet certain legal guidelines. Um, we can kind of see how the health is doing there. And we just have a, yeah, if you wanna go on, we have a few other points that just uh, let us know how we're doing. So website, um, you know, that's even more important. I feel like during the, this time frame that, that we're in, because that's the major way people interact with us. Maybe the only way aside from inter the uh, email uh, mailing rates. Uh, we've actually gone from in my time in this position, we've gone from doing a mailer for every single professional learning event uh, that we hosted to no mailings. Um, so this email uh, rates is extremely important to us because this is one of the, this and social media are the only ways that we're pushing that information out to folks. Um, so knowing how that is doing is, is very important. And uh, conference, uh, again, a key revenue driver for us. Uh, we're a little bit different than I think a lot of associations in that it's not uh, kind of a make or break for us, but it, but it is a, a good revenue generator. Um, so we can see how we're doing year over year. And you can see 2018 uh, was kind of our last low year uh, before we implemented these uh, region goals. And we've just been climbing ever since. Um, and then we have this nice little uh, indicator that lets us know how, uh, how we're doing within the, those goals. And this was, again, uh, last year. You can see we set a goal of 727, and we, uh, we definitely broke that. We love to see that. And so we've talked about, you know, right here, this is a great way to jump into goals by region. So this is your goal overall for the conference. And then what you have, what we were talking about a moment ago, is you're able to see goals for each of your components or regions. And so here is where, you know, Jason or whoever would be able to go in, right, and say, okay, this is the region that I want to see. Um, you know, we can pull someone up and then we can see um, how they're doing against their goal here. Yep. All right. And then the one last thing I wanted to point out while we're here in your site is uh, you talked about all of your professional development events and um, how you're using Nucleus. And so this, what we have here is a view that lets you see one specific event over many years. And so talk to us a little bit about um, how your team at IPA uses this to make decisions. Uh, we offer 140 courses each uh, fiscal year. And uh, we've been very successful in the, uh, the number of registrants we've had for that and our reputation with delivering those. And I think part of that is our intentionality and in how we develop those courses. We spend a lot of uh, staff time ensuring that they are at a very high quality. So we don't want to just pitch them after delivering them a few times over the course of a fiscal year. We all like to uh, be able to offer them for at least a few years. Um, but you, without doing a lot of work in our database, it's hard to tell exactly when a course is flagging. When has its time come? Um, uh, there's some anecdotal, anecdotal evidence I'm sure that people could provide, but, but there's only two people doing the planning on this and the, the time it would take to involve staff, it, it just isn't feasible. So what they can do now is in the spring when they're planning our next fiscal year's round of events, they can come in here look at each, uh, we call them academies, each academy and see how is revenue, how is attendance doing year to year? Um, is this the year that we finally say, mm, this academy is probably not gonna last past this year? Um, is there, do we look at it and say, man, demand has just been going up, let's keep on offering this until we start to see it drop off. 
Um, and so this has saved a ton of time and a lot of headaches um, because while we still might set up events and have to cancel them due to lack of registration numbers, the, the number of actual canceled events certainly has gone down because of our ability to kind of forecast out when an event has, has lost steam in its popularity. All right, fantastic. So I have a couple more questions for you, Drew, but while we're here, I wanted to uh, just walk everyone through a couple other ideas for engaging components. And so what I wanted to show is another client that was, uh, they were putting out weekly and monthly reports to each of their chapters. And it was becoming very time consuming to generate a report for every chapter, every week, every month. And so what we did is we took a, uh, their membership carousel and we turned it on its head and we were able to uh, provide them with two different carousels in Nucleus to allow them to, one, better report internally on how their chapters are doing, but two, allow their chapters to do their own monitoring of their own metrics. Um, and then, kind of taking it a step further, they were able to uh, work within the chapter. So each chapter was able to look at how the other chapters were doing and either find a little bit of extra motivation, as Drew mentioned earlier, with uh, you know the healthy and natural competition, or reach out to a chapter if they see that someone's doing really well and maybe they are struggling or they need some new ideas, you know, lean on each other for um, some peer-to-peer -peer networking. Um, so this first carousel allows uh, both the chapter management and uh, the headquarters staff to see kind of overall across all of the chapters. How are the chapters doing? Uh, how many chapters do we have? How many members? Kind of general health of all of the chapters as an organizational whole. And then we're able to go into uh, an individual chapter. So much like we did with IPA's regions, where we were able to see uh, how every region was doing towards their event registration goals, every chapter is able to come in and see how they are doing as a chapter. So how many members do they have? What do their member trends look like? Uh, what do their renewal rates look like? And they're really able to, you know, kind of gauge the health of every single chapter uh, throughout the year without having to rely on, you know, staff to generate additional reporting or something like that. All right, so Drew, as we wrap up today, a couple of final questions for you. Uh, you know, IPA has done really well with Nucleus and their data analytics solutions. What do you all have planned next for uh, your analytics journey? Yeah, I think, uh, so I mentioned our strategic plan. We're at the start, uh, what a time to start a new uh, three-year strategic plan. Um, and part of that, uh, the, that we're really looking at is driving up membership. Uh, we, we've done an analysis and, and we think that we're probably at sitting at 60% market share. So there's a lot of members out there that, or people that we think should be members that aren't. So we're looking at um, how do we monitor that through, through Nucleus? And then also um, setting goals, just like conference for our regions, adding that to, to their, their slide. So we will be able to see, uh, you know, a Lincoln region, we have a goal of them of getting 10 new members uh, this year. Uh, where are they at with that? How are they doing? What, what's the health of that region like? Uh, so, so using it to, you know, I think um, conference was kind of a low hanging fruit or maybe not low hanging fruit, but it, uh, relatively easy for us to, to bite off. And we've seen the, the success of that. And so kind of translating that into to membership, I think will probably be our, our next big step. All right, fantastic. And so one final question, uh, as folks leave today and you know head back and you know put their heads down and start doing their own work at their own organizations, any recommendations for you know folks starting a data journey or maybe in the middle of their data journey or you know engaging with their components or you know regions, chapters, whoever in a different way? Sure. So the the thing I would say um, as you start your journey is make sure that um, to set expectations, uh, know what exactly you want to get out of this, because with data, I'm sure you anyone who who looks at uh, your organization's data knows there's so many data points, and and you can just get lost in the numbers. So pick an easy thing that you can get done, or maybe two, and that really helps with buy-in within your association. Because if you get some easy wins early on. Um, I think everyone from the C-suite down to, um, you know, the, the receptionist that, that welcomes people into the building will, will be um, more readily uh, 
available to, to buy into this. They, they'll see that early success and, and kind of want to uh, to move forward with that. And, and also, I, I would say, you know, this is such any data data analytics tool is so it's such a big step from no data analytics tool, right? Like we all have all of this data living in different silos that doesn't talk to each other unless you go in and you do some pivot tables in Excel and then you look up the, the shortcut for that formula in Excel and Google and, and you do all this work. Any data analytics tool, uh, once you have it implemented, is going to just cut down on that time so much. And, it, and then you have time to kind of do the higher level uh, thinking and strategy to, to really grow your association as opposed to just kind of it's not busy work but 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 doing unnecessary work you know we, I, this is uh, something that that one of my bosses told me way back in my early 20s and it's something that, that I love to live by you know the, the work smarter not harder um, and I think data analytics tools really help you do that all right fantastic well drew thank you for being here today it's been a pleasure thanks have a great day thanks Hi there, welcome to Dramatically Enhanced Member Engagement Scoring. My name is Rebecca Duff. I'm the Director of Client Success at Gravitate Solutions. I'm joined today by Shane Kelly, the Director of Member Services at 340B Health. Shane, thanks for joining me today. Oh, you bet, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, to get us started, I want to start by talking about member engagement scoring, engagement scoring in general. Engagement scoring is the practice where scores are assigned to individuals or organizations based on the activities that they participate in. Uh, by assigning weighted point values to activities, an engagement score is generated for each individual or organization. And then using these point values, you're able to track engagement trends for your entire member or constituent base, identify individuals or organizations based on engagement level, and identify trends in an individual or organization's engagement. There's a multitude of use cases for this data, which we're actually going to get into a little bit later today, and that is why Shane is here with us. So Shane, as we talk about 340B's specific use of engagement scoring, could you provide an overview of 340B Health? We are a... Uh... A hospital association representing hospitals throughout the country in all 50 states. Um, um, and like many, many associations, um, trade associations, we have both uh, the member, which in our case is the hospital, even a health system, and then an individual human being that uses most of the tools and resources. How did you look at member engagement before? How did you look at each of those systems and really get a whole picture of how you were engaging with your members? The, the honest answer, I don't think we, we did. I don't think we really knew we had hunches, um, but I don't think we really did know. Well, you know, we, through IMS, we could look and just very tediously look through each member file or member record and say, okay, this person attended a webinar and at one of our conferences last year. Great. Um, but beyond that, we really had, I don't, you know, informs did have its, its process and its analytics, but combining all those things and connecting the dots, I don't think we really did. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so once you got Nucleus up and running, you were connected to all of your systems. How did you get your staff on board? How did you get your executives on board? Can you talk to us about how everyone is using it and how you got them to commit. Okay. Well, um, well, my uh, I have a staff of of one giant staff, staff of one, and she that took absolutely no motive, any kind of prompting. She loves the software. The second she had her credential, she was in there and just going crazy in in at Nucleus, and she she likes to 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 look through the data and to understand the data and enjoys the interface. So that was no problem at all. There was more work and training that needed to do with the operations team more largely than the entire team um, in terms of getting them on board to use the platform um, effectively. And quite frankly, not everyone does. And I don't think that's necessary. I don't think every single person has to touch the software. However, I will say that just about everyone in our organization uses what Kalika, my, my staff and I produce um, out of it and um, the operations team produces out of, of Nucleus. But in order to get the few people, the four, five, six people that really need to be in, in the software every day, every week, we basically did trainings. We just got an office room and demoed it. We had a demo and say, hey, what do you think? Let's look through this. What questions do we have? And we just kind of hammered it down as a team. So we just wanted to get everyone involved as early as possible in the process so they could see the data, they understand, understood the interface, how to, how to kind of cut and dice the data in the way they needed to see it based on their particular department. Okay. All right, fantastic. So now I want to 
do a little bit of show and tell. And I want to talk about your specific implementation. And so the very first thing I have up here is just a quick snapshot of what your implementation looks like. What I want to highlight here is you talked a little bit about the different levels of, you know, different ways that you interact with folks. You've got organizations, you've got individual members. And so I want to highlight here before we jump into it a little bit further, how you're also tracking engagement at different levels. And so you're tracking engagement at an organizational level and then an individual level. And that's going to come into play uh, in a moment as we dive into the next few slides. And so, as I mentioned, we're tracking engagement at individual levels, organizational levels, but what's really unique about the way that you all are tracking engagement, Shane, is that you are also rolling points up and down. And so what that allows you to do is look at an organization's uh, engagement score and how they're engaging with you, and then also roll in uh, any individual that's tied to that organization and the way that they're engaging with you. So you get kind of a multifaceted view into how you're engaging with folks. Can you talk a little bit about how you're using those scores and that functionality? at 340B. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it is really important that we have those different the different layers or different levels. And we, and we have three. <clears throat> we have the individual staff member, human being, like the director of pharmacy, uh, his or her engagement, then the hospital that they work at and their engagement. And then two thirds of our hospital members are part of a system health system, of course. So we look at that, that level of, of engagement as well. So hospitals, ABC may be slightly engaged, but their system they're in is highly engaged or vice versa. And then on down, up and down, down to the individual who's has their engagement level all the way up to the system level, up and down, back and forth. And that's important that I can, we can slice and dice that. So I can go and talk to, okay, the system isn't real engaged, but boy, there's one hospital in the system really is. So if I want to suggest a round table site when we were doing round tables in person, I mean, well, again, um, a, a, a good location and a particular uh, maybe congressional district, I can go and say, okay, this person in this congressional district is very engaged, this hospital is. Or I could go even lower down and say, oh, this individual at this hospital in this system is really engaged. So maybe I approach them about hosting a round table. So it's real important for us to go up and down from the individual all the way through the system, anywhere in between to kind of know who's engaged, who's not, and at what level of the engagement there is. All right, and so you hit this just a moment ago, and one of the benefits of member engagement is that you can actually isolate most engaged individuals, but on the other side of that, you can identify least engaged individuals or organizations, you know, health systems, hospitals in your case, uh, but in particular members. And so this has come into play for you all and for others and looking at, you know, if you want someone to contact, a, you know, a representative or someone in Congress or to, you know, sponsor a meeting for you, this is a great way to identify those folks. Uh, but what I actually really love is the other side of this, which is the non-member side of it. Uh, so what has 340B been able to do with uh, non-member data? So looking at most engaged non-member data, what can you you do with that? Uh, quite a bit actually because obviously like any any uh, healthy association it's important to retain as many members as you can but you always have to recruit because you're going to lose some every year that's just the way the system works so in order to recruit what I do is the first thing I do is look at what non-members what potential members are engaged with us now our firewalls do stop a lot of potential members from accessing most of our tools mm -hmm. but they they can access different things at different times and if they're doing that if they're kind of approaching us well that's a great target for me to go talk to them and say hey i noticed you're doing x y and z do you want to learn more about our organization do you want to do you want to join so it's really important that i can go and see their engagement score as a potential member. Because the higher it is, the more likely it is they will join, given a little push. Um, and then going back to something you, you touched on, um, high engagement, of course, we like to see of our members. Mm -hmm. But a, a member with real low engagement is also important to me because especially come renewal season or just before renewal season starts, if there's a member that's, that isn't really engaged, that throws a red flag to us. And say, well, oh, they're not engaging they're less likely to renew. And we'll want to talk to them and make sure that they're understanding the value of, of, of the program and they're taking advantage of all the resources. But yeah, so both with uh, engaged members, not engaged members, but those potential members who are engaged, we, we look at all that data and can take advantage of it. I love that. All right, so Shane, as we wrap up today, a couple final questions. Uh, what's next for 340B Health and your analytics journey? Well, hopefully a lot. What, what I'd like to see, and I think my, my, uh, 
my team, my supervisor would like to see is to bring in a little bit more of the financial piece of it. So I can look and see um, our board and our CEO wants to know, 340B is fairly complicated. Um, we have hospitals and those hospitals are subdivided into five groups and so on. We have different levels of membership standard enhanced and so on. What we'd all like to see is a way for me to not just say we have X amount of hospitals in this congressional district of the state, how many enhanced members are renewing at what levels and at what dollar value? How many dish hospitals, it's inside baseball, but dish is a kind of hospital. How many, how much, how many, what rate are they renewing and at what dollar amount? So I, we'd like to bring that kind of financial piece into it. Okay, that's great. And what about uh, any final thoughts or recommendations for our listeners today? Well, if, if you're interested, if anyone's interested in just knowing their their members better, and I think we all should, and I think we all won't know in our heart that we need to, um, I think it's something that a software package like, like, like Nucleus is is really helpful. And if you decide to, to, to engage in that, go down that road, that data road, um, make sure you involve as many people in your organization as possible. Get that buying, get them excited about it um, because it's great to have all this data. And we, we, I think, use a lot of it and use it very well. But if, again, if it just sits there and you don't take advantage of it, it it's not going to help your organization succeed. So I would just say, um, Look, if you have all these different platforms and they're not talking to each other, I think this is a great way to get those engagement scores and understand what's going on where with your members and non-members. So use data. And second, if you do and you choose a, something, to, a software to help you, a platform to help you like that, get your team involved as many as you can early on. Yeah, that's great advice. I actually, I can attest that is a part of what made 340B successful. I remember sitting in a, a conference room with many of you yeah. uh, for, you know, a couple of sessions really talking about how everyone could benefit from uh, Nucleus as we were putting it together. Uh, so that's great advice. All right. Well, Shane, we have reached the end of our time today. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Shane's contact information is up as well as mine. Please feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Shane. Have a great day. You too. Thank you so much. Thanks.